Salesforce.com is down 10% over the last 24 hours. Do you step in and buy the dip on Salesforce.com stock? We'll talk about that and more on today's show. What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. Salesforce.com just reported Q3 earnings. We'll take a look at the revenue, the revenue growth. We'll take a look at the guidance, the profits, everything that I think you need to know when it comes to the most recent quarter. Salesforce named Brett Taylor, a longtime executive of the company, as a new chief, co-chief executive to Mark Benioff, the absolute iconic CEO out here in the Silicon Valley. We'll see if this means Mark Benioff is making his way out the door or if he just wants some extra hands on deck. Now, when we take a look at the financials over at Salesforce.com, I tell you what, Salesforce.com reminds me of fine dining. You go out, it's really, really good food, but it's really small, really small portions. It always leaves you wanting more. I always feel that way when I look at Salesforce.com, that, man, I got these big expectations of profits and revenue, and it just doesn't materialize yet. And we'll see if any of that changes when we look at these numbers. And then we got to look at the stock from a technical perspective as well. I know I got a million lines on this chart. I'll clean it up, but I just wanted to show you to visualize first, and then we'll clean it up. We'll see where this one potentially could be headed in the coming days and weeks ahead. Now, I talked about how Salesforce.com just reported their Q3 earnings. Those came in at $6.86 billion. I'll show you those on the financials here in a second, and we'll compare them to year over year on this quarterly basis. We'll probably look at the nine-month basis as well, like we always do here on the channel. Now, that was good for 26.6% year-over-year growth, which is not bad, okay? When you look at FANG, that's probably towards the low end, especially if you include like an NVIDIA or a Tesla in your FANG. But when you're looking at Facebook and certainly Amazon and some of the FANG stocks that aren't growing nearly as fast as some of the high flyers like a Google and the aforementioned Tesla, well, I tell you what, this revenue growth kind of leaves you wanting a little bit more, but it is steady and it is growing. The company did raise their guidance. That was over and above consensus. Now, what they did come in was the upcoming quarter in Q1 of the upcoming fiscal year. They're expecting revenue to come in between 7.2 and $7.25 billion. Consensus was actually a little bit higher than that at about $7.36 billion. Some people think that may be why one of the reasons why the stock is selling off, although we saw the broader market kind of pull back today and over the last few days. And it makes sense as well. The other thing that we got to keep in mind with CRM, we are just off the all-time highs, okay? The all-time highs, or at least the 52-week high on this one, is about $311 per share. We're not that far away, okay? In the after hours, this one is trading off quite a bit. We're at about $268 per share, but we're not like epically far away from the 52-week high on this one. That could factor in why this stock could want to take a breather as well. We'll talk about that from a technical perspective perspective as well. Maybe there is some selling or some nervousness by the fact that Brett Taylor was announced as a new coup chief executive to Mark Benioff. We'll see if this is a succession plan or if this is something like what CRM has done in the path. They've, I believe they've had co-chief executives or other people there helping Mark Benioff out at the chief executive level. And this could be just another example of that. I think what most investors are digesting are these numbers on a company that has a 200, yeah, a 278 billion, $278 billion market cap. And we just printed $6.8 billion worth of revenue in the most recent quarter. I thought that was a little high. I thought, man, that's actually a pretty good quarter. I guess this is the first quarter where we recognize slack revenues, which my guess were probably at least a couple hundred million dollars in terms of hitting this revenue side over at salesforce.com. So we get a little bit of benefit of that as well. So total revenues went from 5.4 up to 6.8. Like we said, talked about like 26% growth there. Now our revenues, unfortunately, grew a little bit faster in the most recent quarter, okay? Revenues or cost of revenues in this case went from 1.4 up to $1.8 billion. That gives us gross profit off this $6.8 billion. So we take off our cost of $1.8 billion. Well, you get $5 billion worth of gross profit. And so that can explain a little bit this massive valuation that this company enjoys is you have mega tech like high margins okay off of 6.8 billion dollars you clear over five billion dollars to that gross profit side we're seeing a similar story play out over the last nine months you had 19 billion dollars worth of revenue and you're clearing about 14.1 billion to that operating or excuse me that gross 
profit side. Now, speaking of operating profit, we got research and development that went from 902 up to 1.2 billion. We got marketing and sales went up quite a bit, 2.3 billion up to over 3.1 billion. And general administrative nicely stayed flat. It went from 522 to 667. This is why we like mature mega cap tech is because these expenses, while they are growing and they've kind of put a crimp on margins and our operating profits, they're still within line at what you'd expect with a company like this. Unfortunately, this company just doesn't make enough revenue. Okay, so here's our total operating expenses coming in at $4.9 billion. So I talked about how we had $5 billion worth of gross profit. Now we got a minus off 4.98 and that leaves us with nothing. I mean, we're talking about like $38 million worth of income from operations, which again, $38 million in our bank accounts would be amazing. Okay, but $38 million on $6.8 billion worth of revenue is a essentially a rounding error for this company. And then when you factor in again, that this company has a $278 billion market cap to print basically pennies to the income from operation side, just always leaves me wanting more with this company. Take a look at over the last nine months off the $19.1 billion worth of revenue. We had $5 billion in cost that left us with $14.1 billion worth of gross profit. We have all our fees, selling market marketing, general administrative, and research and development. That takes us to our $13.4 billion worth of cost there. So we take our $14.1 billion worth of gross profit minus off our operating expenses. That gets us down to $724 million. Again, essentially a rounding error when you're talking about $19.1 billion. I just did a video on Facebook. Facebook in a quarter does north of $20 billion. In fact, closer to $30 billion worth of revenue and they print over $10 billion down to the income from operations side. So that company is doing way, way, I mean, we're talking way more in terms of revenue and profits with this company. This company is basically break even, okay? And it's like a bad quarter or two away from really losing money. And it just has me wanting more. This company has been around a long time. A lot of its products, quite frankly, are very mature, mature, maybe even more so than some of Facebook offerings. And certainly someone like Google and Microsoft who absolutely put a company like this to bed. Now, from an asset and a cash and a balance sheet perspective, the company looks pretty good. It looks like we had some cash bleed out of the company. We're going to assume that this has to do with the acquisition of Slack, which cost this company, I think it was like north of $20 billion dollar acquisition. We're going to assume some of that had to have been in cash and we'll probably assume correctly when we look down at cash flows. But we do see we had over 11.8, almost $12 billion worth of cash at the beginning of the year. Now we're south of that. Okay. We're closer to about $9 billion. We do have even less in receivables. Take a look at this. You went from 7.7 .7 down to four. It could be just the way clients accounts rebuild over at CRM. It could be a lot of them rebuild in January. And so you stack up a big accounts receivable and it gets depleted over the year. So not necessarily something I'd be super concerned about. I would look at the next quarter and make sure that this accounts receivable number kind of ticks up. If it's not, it's showing me that potentially we're starting to lose a little bit in terms of receivables. Maybe it's just how they bill clients as well. And we have to go off what the company said they're planning to do in the upcoming quarter or so. They're planning to do about $7.2 billion worth of revenue. Like we talked about, they just did $6.8 billion worth of revenue. So they're certainly expecting that revenue and those funds to just continue to come. Could be just the way they're billing companies. So look, everything else looks pretty good here. This is a company with not a lot of total liabilities. They did have to blow up their balance sheet just a little bit. I do believe this is related to the Slack acquisition as well. Here's our non-current debt. It went from 2.6 at the beginning of the year. Boom. All the way up to $10.5 billion. So they blew up the balance sheet a little bit, but you have total assets of $87 billion. Most of it is sitting here in goodwill because this company has really rolled up a bunch of other companies, not just Slack over the years. This company just constantly rolls up other companies into their brand. And that's where a lot of this goodwill comes. And you see over the last year, it really ballooned. It went from 26 billion up to 47 billion. So when you look at a total asset of 
of this company, you have to factor in a little bit of this goodwill and whether or not those companies that it has acquired really, really have provided that kind of value on the balance sheet. I tend to discount this to a certain degree. So this total asset, why it looks really good year over year from 66 billion up to 87 billion, I would discount it just a little bit. And our total liabilities absolutely went up for the most part due to this non-current debt hitting the books. Now, from a cash flow perspective, doesn't paint a very good story. Here's over the last three months, print a dismal net income number of $468 million. We were over a billion dollars. Look, last year on a quarterly basis, which is not that bad, for the nine month, we're barely sitting at over $1.4 billion worth of net income over the last nine months. Just not that good. In the previous period, we're sitting at 3.8. This company is going Going in the wrong direction from an operating profit and certainly a net income perspective. But cash flows paints a little bit different story because they because they get to add back in things that really hurt this net income number. Okay. Net income ended up being about what you printed from a cash flow from operations over the last three months, and it beat last year. Same thing for the nine months. While our net income is trending down, our cash flows went from 2.6 billion up to this $4 billion. So depending on how you want to analyze this company, from a cash flow perspective, it's actually looking better, but from a net income and certainly an operating profit, which is where I tend to focus. I tend to focus here on this channel and in my own investments, I really look a lot at this income from operations line. This is where I focus and what I focus on. This shows us how well this business is performing. And then I can take that and compare it to other stocks that I might want to buy. And just from a growth rate perspective, this company does check a nice box, 26% growth. That's pretty solid growth, even at an elevated valuation. We'll give them credit for that. But from an income from operations perspective, we're barely spitting. I mean, there's small businesses probably in my town that are coming close to doing that probably on a yearly basis, not necessarily a quarterly basis like this company is doing. Now, from a cash flow perspective, we talked about how some of this financing activities, we had money bleed out of the company. So in the most recent quarter, we had $404 million worth of positive cash flow from the operations. From a financing and investing activities, we had $976 million leave the balance sheet, but we had even more so left with this repayment of Slack convertible note that that was at $1.3 billion. This is why net cash and cash equivalents in the most recent quarter was at about $1.5 billion. So we're seeing cash move out of this company. Not necessarily a bad thing. When you're not that profitable, you have to continue this growth rate because if this growth rate starts to slip, guess what's going to start slipping? This stock price even faster. That's what always has me nervous about salesforce.com. It is not like Facebook. It is not like Google. It's not like Apple. It's not like Microsoft. Shoot, it's not even like Tesla at this point. This company doesn't print any money to this operating side. These are tiny, tiny numbers. And quite frankly, not very impressive on this revenue side. They need to keep this revenue growth rate up. The only way this company is really achieving that is not necessarily through organic growth. It's really through rolling up Slack. It's through rolling up other companies. And I just think in a rising rate environment where it gets more expensive to finance these types of deals, that could hurt salesforce.com to a certain degree. And I think some, uh, we're speaking real high level here, okay? And maybe Mark Benioff knows this. He knows where interest rates are going to go. He knows that they're going to go higher. He knows that it's going to be harder and harder for salesforce.com to finance a new deal, a bigger deal to get that revenue growth rate that they need in order to keep the valuation and the market cap or this one. So maybe he's trying to head off into the sunset before that really gets realized. Now, I just walked you through the terrible bear case scenario in terms of fundamentals. And look, we are not that far off the highs. The highs on this stock are back here just we're talking like last month this stock was up over $300 per share those are the highs for this stock now we did break a key level so the previous highs were right at about 284 
call it $283 per share. Once we broke above that, it did a nice little breakout, came back and back tested that, which is not at all that problematic. But unfortunately, we've gapped down below it. I put this big red line in right here. This is where salesforce.com is trading in the after hours at about $267. So I put this big red line in here to just show you how much we've gapped underneath a previous area of support. It was resistance for a while, and now it, it's been broken and we are headed lower over at Salesforce. Now, I put these two channels to show you that this stock, to me, it looks like we're just completing a channel between $210 per share, that's down here, this red line down here, and up to, to about $284 per share. The vast majority of the candles on this chart over the last year, in fact, a little more than a year, are between that two price action. We channeled down, we stopped down here at $210 per share, and then we channeled up, and it looks like we've stopped at about $283 per share, and we've gapped down below. Now, what I would anticipate, quite frankly, based on what we We've seen with salesforce.com is we just start a new channel and we start heading down to our area of support down here close to $210. Will it get all the way down to 210? I don't necessarily think it's going to get there anytime soon unless the whole market continues to pull back. Then absolutely this stock is just going to get obliterated. It's not making much profit. It just took out $10 billion worth of debt from an interest rate perspective. They're going to have trouble continuing to make those kinds of deals if we see a next wave of rate increases that make it tough for this company. It has tons of stops along the way. There are a ton of candles in between 260 and all the way down back to 210. I wouldn't expect this stock to head down there. But quite frankly, I would just expect this sideways kind of chop consolidation with Salesforce just to continue. I'll clear these lines out so now you can see our area of consolidation, which is really, in my opinion, just what we are going to continue over the next coming weeks ahead with salesforce.com. We're going to channel between 210 and about 280 on this one. And if you can get it down here at 210, you like this stock, you're comfortable with the fact that they've got strong revenue growth, mainly driven by acquisition and rolling up other companies. And we have minuscule profitability over at CRM. Well, this can be a stock for you. Me personally, this just simply is not necessarily a stock for me. But coincidentally enough, my son does own it in one of his portfolios because there was this major, major dip back here. And I did happen to pick it up in one of his portfolios. And he's actually done tremendously well out there. So while I say it's not necessarily a stock for me, it is a stock that I've been in. I probably will look to take profits on from a very, very bear case scenario as it starts approaching. 210. You're watching this stock very closely along with the broader markets because if you break 210 on this one, well, there's much, much lower levels south of 200 where this one will want to go. Now, if this stock and the rest of the market kind of finds its footing, we're looking for on the bullish side, a break again above about 285. More specifically, probably 300. We'll want to retest these highs. If we were to get above these highs, we talk about it all the time on this show. We're playing in this market. We're playing the breakout. If you look at Apple stock today, that stock was one of the few stocks that was up because it's in the midst of a breakout. And so we're looking for this. The stock wouldn't really excite me, quite frankly, unless we got down here closer to 210 or we broke above I would call it even higher than this. I'd want to break above about 300 on this one. Then I might get excited about this one. Continue this upward channel. Maybe we get a monster rally. That's what I'm seeing with salesforce.com. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Be back again soon with lots more. Good luck with your investments.